On today's episode, we're talking about production delays at Giga Berlin, new Cybertruck details, Vermont Energy switching to Powerwall, Tesla's first mega cast at Giga Texas, news on the Tesla Roadster, and why a UFC fighter is calling out Elon Musk. Let's get going. Hey, Elonites and Musketeers, welcome to the Tesla space where we share the latest news, rumors, and insights into all things Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk. Elon Musk paid a visit to Germany on May 17th and toured the construction site of the new Gigafactory near Berlin. While there, Elon gave a new update on production times for the factory that was a lot more pessimistic than what we had been hearing so far this year. The expectation has always been that Giga Berlin would start producing Model Y vehicles by June or July of this year. But Elon just said that the end of this year is when he now expects that production to begin. Elon said, quote, it's hard to predict with precision because you can only make the cars when all of the pieces are here. It looks like we're able to start production end of this year. Elon followed that up with tweets on May 18th that said, Giga Berlin suppliers, please accelerate and then later added aiming for extreme precision with the next gen Model Y, microns, not millimeters. Now there was a report earlier this month out of Germany that did claim Tesla were as much as six months behind schedule at Giga Berlin and production was delayed until the end of January, 2022. Most of us just dismissed this report as unfounded even the German government claimed that it was false information, but now it looks like that might be the case here. With Elon saying end of year for vehicle production, that's not a very specific time frame, and Elon has a notoriously bad history of overpromising delivery dates. Just look at the Model S Plaid. All signs right now are pointing to delays in government approvals and general bureaucracy for the delayed timeline. Right now, it doesn't look like this has anything to do with the technical or engineering side of the construction process. Elon told German reporters, quote, I think there could be less bureaucracy, that would be better. There should be some kind of active process for removal of rules. Otherwise, over time, the rules will just accumulate and you get more and more rules until eventually you just can't do anything. German officials have said that they do not plan on meeting with Elon while he's in the area and that his visit is purely technical in nature, not political. Whatever the reason for the delay, a six month setback is not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. Obviously, we were all really excited for 1 million Tesla deliveries in 2021, and that's clearly not going to happen at this point, but this is still a long game we're playing. New video from the Gigafactory construction site in Austin, Texas gives us a closer look at the Cybertruck bed with the tailgate and integrated ramp deployed. The Cybertruck prototype has become a mainstay around the Giga Texas build site, and it looks like Tesla are actually putting the truck to use on the job. In this new cell phone video, we can see the Cybertruck with the tailgate open and the built-in ramp drop down. The truck is absolutely covered in mud and dirt as well, looking very much like someone just took it out for a rip. We can also notice that the truck is pitched down at the back, showing that the adaptive air suspension will actually drop the rear end lower to the ground when the ramp is deployed. Even if the video quality is pretty bad, it's nice to get a more raw look at the Cybertruck that isn't a glossy promo video. It's even better to see this truck out on a job site, covered in mud, doing work like it was designed to do. Driving the Cybertruck through Manhattan is fun and everything, but that's not where it belongs. No one living in the Upper East Side is buying one of these, or at least probably shouldn't be buying one of these. Putting the Cybertruck on a construction site is basically advertising directly to thousands of pickup truck owners and hopefully getting them thinking about electric vehicles as a real option for their next truck purchase. This is genius. Vermont-based electric utility Green Mountain Power announced a new program to use Tesla Autobidder software and power walls in order to replace fossil fuel-powered power plants 
helping them to balance the electrical grid. This relatively small electric utility operating in Vermont was one of the earliest adopters of the Tesla Powerwall. It has been leading the deployment of Tesla Powerwalls with 2,000 units installed as of 2018. And in 2020, it signed a deal to get up to 1,000 more Powerwalls from Tesla per year. The company runs several programs using Powerwalls and it reported that it saved ratepayers $3 million in Vermont last year. Now it is announcing yet another program to harness the capacity of the Tesla Powerwalls on its network with Tesla's AutoBidder software. As far as what AutoBidder is or what exactly it does, I'm honestly still not 100% sure on that one. Tesla says that AutoBidder provides independent power producers, utilities, and capital partners the ability to autonomously monetize battery assets. The features of AutoBidder are price forecasting, load forecasting, generation forecasting, dispatch optimization, and smart bidding. And this is all powered by Tesla's machine learning expertise. It looks like in Vermont, they are using these Tesla assets to help them balance the flow of power on the grid by cycling on and off of different energy sources, one of which now being this network of 3000 Powerwalls. GMP says that using their network of Powerwall batteries and Tesla AutoBidder software, GMP is the first utility to perform this essential grid service in the wholesale power market with clean stored energy distributed from customers' homes. In addition to cutting carbon, this pioneering project is also benefiting all GMP customers through reduced power supply costs. Hey, if you're into Tesla news, then you'd probably be into our Tesla Space newsletter. It's great and it's free. Link in the description down below. Tesla has also produced the first full front section of the Model Y Megacast at Gigafactory, Texas. This comes ahead of the start of production for the Model Y with the new structural battery pack technology and 4680 battery cells. Casting expert Axel Turk leaked an image of the first front end Megacast underbody produced by Tesla at the new factory in Austin that is still under construction. From the photo, we can really get a sense of just how big this single chunk of car really is. The expert also mentioned that this part weighs 130 kilograms or 286 pounds. We also got some news from Elon on Twitter recently where he said that the Model Y production in Austin will begin with the 4680 battery cells right from the start. So this all pretty much confirms that the Texas Model Y will come fully casted with a structural 4680 battery pack when it finally arrives. Hopefully all of this good news coming out of Austin will overshadow the disappointments that we are seeing in Germany. If Texas can still hit production by the middle of this year, then people will be able to see what Tesla is really capable of when it comes to manufacturing. We've got some new images of the Tesla Model S Plaid, or maybe even Plaid Plus, that was spotted at the Laguna Seca racetrack in recent days. And the first thing that people noticed about this new prototype is the automatically retractable spoiler that is now built into the trunk lid. An electronically controlled spoiler is a pretty common feature for high-end supercars, but this is the first time we have ever seen something like this on a Tesla vehicle. The previous Model S Plaid prototypes that hit the track had a huge rear wing just kind of bolted on and it looked kind of ridiculous. But now we can see that Tesla has integrated it into the actual design of the car. This is the first we've seen or heard about the spoiler feature, and it's obviously unclear whether this is a feature for all Plaid equipped vehicles or if it will be exclusive to the top tier Plaid Plus option. Hopefully we get updated spec sheets from the Model S coming soon with actual deliveries in June. Speaking of new car developments for Tesla, the new Roadster is finally getting some love and maybe even some real news on when this car will drop. Tesla is bringing the new Roadster prototype on a rare outing at LA's Peterson Automotive Museum ahead of having a new release candidate later this summer. Elon has often remained vague about a new official timeline for the electric hypercar program, but he confirmed earlier this year that the engineering of the new Tesla Roadster will be completed in 2021 in order to enter production in 2022. He even said that he expects Tesla to have a new drivable release candidate 
of the Roadster by the end of the summer. Tesla does not take the Roadster prototype out often. The last time it was seen was at Tesla's battery day last September. The Peterson Automotive Museum has now announced they will have the new Roadster prototype on display for two weeks starting on May 19th. UFC fighter Benil Dairouche surprised many on Saturday night when he decided to call out none other than Elon Musk after his victory. The lightweight fighter was not happy about the long wait time for his wife's new Tesla. In his post-fight interview with Joe Rogan, Dairouche took the opportunity to call out our boy Elon saying, Elon Musk, Where's my wife's car, bro? I've been waiting six months. I'm having a baby. I need a good car. Let's go, Elon. Get me my car. Darush was asked a follow-up question about his Elon call-out in another post-fight interview, and the fighter explained that he bought a Tesla because he wanted the safest car for his pregnant wife. He ordered in December and was expecting a car delivered in March. So it must have been a Model S or maybe a Model X. Darush said again, Elon, bro, I'm a big fan, but this is disrespect. <laughs> and I don't think he's a guy you want to disrespect. Elon did respond to a Twitter thread reporting on the incident saying, coming soon, sorry for the delay. Funny enough, Elon has recently taken on a seat on the board of the newly publicly traded Endeavor Group, which is actually the UFC's parent company. For real though, I don't know if this is the most amazing advertising ever or more fuel for Tesla critics. It probably serves as both. Either way, Tesla needs to get these cars delivered because this is just getting ridiculous. If you enjoy this kind of Tesla news update, then why not subscribe to our weekly newsletter? We deliver all the updates on Tesla, SpaceX, Elon Musk, and of course Neuralink in a quick, fun, and easy to read package. Link to sign up is in the description below. It's the teslaspace.com. Once you sign up, be sure to check your promotions tab to make sure our emails are going to your main inbox. If you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.